Welcome to Sawyer's Church. My name is Peter Jordan. I'm the senior minister here at Sawyer's Church and it is so, so good that you've been able to join us um, today. And uh, welcome to our church family, our online family, and uh, maybe you're visiting us for the very first time. A very warm welcome to you as well. Please let us know where you're from on the chat and uh, say hello to a few people. I'm sure they'll say hello to you back. And also we've got a team of hosts that are doing a fantastic job. And if you want prayer or want to talk to someone, you can click on one of the buttons there and talk to some of our, our hosts. Now, um, today is a special service. It's going to be a little bit sad, but also exciting as well. Um, ben and Emma have been pastoring our young people here at Soyuz Church for over eight years. And uh, they are going to be leaving to plant a church on the Isle of Wight. So we're going to be saying thank you to them today. And uh, we're going to be saying farewell to them and also praying over them um, as a family as well. So we've got Kids Church in a few moments and uh, then we've got some worship. And then we're going to hear some tributes from a few people in the church whose lives have been touched by the ministry of Ben and uh, Emma. So uh, let's just pray together and then we're going to go over to Kids Church. Heavenly Father, we thank you we can gather um, today and we can gather online Lord, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, Lord, we just pray as we um, say thank you to Ben and Emma um, today. And uh, as we um, hear from various people whose lives have been touched by the ministry, I pray your blessings be upon us in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. OK, we're now going to go over to Magali, um, our children's coordinator for Kids Church.
Welcome to Kids Church. Today, the Bible story takes place just before Jesus was about to die on the cross. He'd spent about three years with his friends, his disciples, and he knew he was about to leave them. And that would have felt a little bit like a hopeless time for his disciples. They'd, they'd left everything to follow him. What would they do without him? Now, Jesus didn't want to leave them without hope because Jesus brings hope. So he said lots of things that would help bring them hope. And what he told them can bring her, us hope too. Let's see what he said. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. I'm going to prepare a place for you. After I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Then I will take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Now, imagine Jesus is preparing a place for you. Imagine the best room designed to be perfect for you. Now, you can have a go at drawing that room later on during the service if you want. When Jesus said there's plenty of room in his father's house, he was saying there's plenty of room in heaven. There's room for all of us there. And Jesus is preparing that place just for us. It'll be even better than we can imagine. And that brings so much hope. We're going to use a little bit of a map and we're going to find a path out of the map. We're going to enter the map of this square, it's a four by four square, this square, and we're going to exit at that square. Now, I'm sure, well, let me rephrase. There is going to be only one right way to get through the map and out. But let's see if your way is going to be the same as the only right way. So I don't know, um, let's think about, I'll, I'll draw different ways with different colors. We can go in that way, then we can maybe go up, or we can go out straight away. That's a very nice and short little map. Somebody else might go, actually I'll go down, and then I'll do like a little bit of a wiggly turn there. Somebody else might say, no, I'll go like that and out. Different, so many different ways to, that we can cross the map. In our story, one of the disciples named Thomas felt confused about the way to the place that Jesus was preparing. He said in, um, in verse 4, Jesus said, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to Jesus, well, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Lots of different ways, all very confusing on the map. Jesus answered to them, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the life. The only way to the Father is through me. If you really knew me, then you would know my Father too. Now, let's see. This is Jesus the way. He takes us, it's as if he's planned the route through the map. He's planned the route through our life. He is the way, the truth and the life. He is the way, the only way to the Father. So whilst in our game we have lots of different ways, um, well, Jesus doesn't change it, doesn't make it a different way for each person. Jesus has already drawn the path for us to follow. It is the way, the truth and the life for everyone. It's the way to heaven and that's by loving and following him. That's an amazing message of hope. If we did, well, no one would be uh, there. But Jesus brings hope because he made a way for us to get to heaven when he died on the cross for us. And that hope isn't just for heaven. Loving and following Jesus gives us a more hopeful life here on earth. When we believe in Jesus, we can find hope, even in the 
hopeless times. Jesus even left us the Holy Spirit, so we know God is with us right now. He fills us with his hope for now and for the future. So when things feel a little bit hopeless, turn to God for hope. Turn to Jesus for hope. He is happy to give us hope for today, plus a hope for eternal life in heaven. I hope you have a great time. Go into uh, the Padlet and the resources and find lots of activities for you to enjoy. Now I look forward to seeing you next week. We're starting our new series, The Miracle of Jesus. And I'm really looking forward to starting it and doing all the activities with you all together. See you next week for a very special December time, every Sunday in December.
Ben and Emma have been such a big influence in my life over the years. They've helped me to grow in the light of God's word and have been there for me through difficult times. They are true role models, not just to me, but all of the youth, and we've been so blessed to have them with us all over the years. Ben has been more than a youth pastor to me though. He is my friend, advisor, support and guide. Someone who has genuinely cared about me throughout and helped me draw closer to God. Emma has been a shining light to me and inspiring in the way she's all in for God and so open with sharing her faith. The love she has shown to me and my family and all of the youth perfectly reflects what Jesus calls us to do, which is to love one another. There are so many stories I can share about Ben and Emma. From the first time I went to Cultivate and got chased because I won an iron, a bit crazy, I know, or the times I became a builder for the day, laying grass, tarmac and helping with the extension. The wisdom they shared with me about um, in these moments about being true to God's word and having faith in every situation are lessons I'll never forget. To say that I'm going to miss you both is an understatement, but I thank God because I know he's calling you to do greater things and to touch so many more lives. Even as God is calling you, he'll be with you every step of the way. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I pray for you that God continues to bless you, to keep you and strengthen you. May his peace surround you and his love and his love be ever with you. I love you both and I'll truly miss you. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to Malachi, Judah and Asher for what they've done with Kids Church. I still remember the Eli and Samuel story that you acted out. And also, who could forget the Lego classics telling us the stories of David and Elijah and Elisha? I want to thank all of the Carmen family for your teamwork and creativity, bringing the message of the Bible to a new generation in such a memorable way. Now, of course, Ben and Emma, you've been much more than just youth pastors. Thank you for all that you've contributed to Sawyer's Church in so many ways. Just to mention a few, both of you have been involved with daily devotions and preaching and thank you for your hospitality especially at ministry team meetings now Ben I've learned a lot from you in many of the meetings we've been at together elders meetings and preaching planning meetings you've got a passion to communicate the gospel and you're strategic about the way you use visual aids to illustrate the main point and social media that's something I don't understand, but you've always had a passion to use social media to get the gospel out to as many people as possible. And then Sawyer's TV. Every week for the last eight months, we've been watching Sawyer's TV and we all owe a big debt of gratitude to Ben for all the video editing he's done. Most of the technical work unseen in the background for Sawyer's TV has been done by Ben. So thank you, Ben. So Ben and Emma, most of all, I want to thank you for your servant hearts and I'm excited about what God is going to do through you in the Isle of Wight.
We're lifting Jesus up. We're lifting Jesus up. We're lifting Jesus up. We're gonna praise Him. You come and fill our hearts with all Your power and love. Take us a level up. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. We're lifting Jesus up. We're lifting Jesus up. We're gonna praise Him. You come and fill our hearts with all Your power and love. Take us a level up. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. Hi, I started serving on the youth team in 2013 and since then it's been a real privilege um, to serve alongside you Ben and Em and to see the youth work grow and I wanted to honour you both in um, how you have served as youth pastors and how you have led uh, the youth work. You have always pressed on towards the calling and the vision that God has given you for our youth work and you have always pushed towards it being the very best it can be for God and for our young people. You always go above and beyond in how you have served our young people, in how you have given of your energy, your time, your love, your prayers. You have loved our young people, you have cheered them on, you have mentored them and discipled them and you have believed in what God is doing in their lives. Um, and since then, since the, you started this youth work, you have seen um, so many young people come to know Jesus. And many of them have been baptised and many of them now are adults um, living for God. And that's just been amazing. And um, we've seen that vision um, become reality in a surge of young people um, coming along to the surge on Sunday, worshipping Jesus and praying uh, together and for each other. And um, over all the parts of the youth work, um, over the years, you have impacted literally hundreds of young people's lives. And um, not only have each of them um, heard the gospel, but they've also experienced a uh, church that they can be welcomed into, where they are loved who they are, where they can have fun and when they can, can be part of a family. Um, and those seeds that you have sown in their lives um, will be with them wherever they go and um, that is an incredible legacy. Uh, one of the biggest ways that um, I believe God has used you guys is how you have built and grown and led our amazing youth team. Um, you've invested so much um, in us as the youth team and encouraged us um, in our faith and um, in how we're using our gifts that God has given us. Um, and you have been intentional that we are not just a team but we are a family and um, we have laughed together, cried together, we've eaten a lot together, um, had so much fun um, and we've served as a family and um, I think I speak not only for myself but for the whole team when I say that it has never been uh, hard work or a chore to be part of the youth team but it has always been an absolute joy. Even when we've been absolutely exhausted after staying up all night for a youth lock-in or we've slept on a deflated air mattress at the uprising or when our team have been crawling through mud alongside the youth or we've been clearing up whatever messy uh, disgusting game that we've organised um, through it all uh, you have led the way and set the tone in the attitude uh, that we have that everything we do we're doing it for God and um, we're doing it together as a family um, and you've showed us how to lead by serving um, and from the mundane moments all the way to the God moments where we've seen breakthrough and been praying for young people and really seen God move um, it has just been 
yeah, a real privilege and it has all been down to your faithfulness in pursuing that vision. And I just want to thank you for who you are, for your characters, for your way that you've used your gifts. You're both really gifted preachers, um, you're both so wise, you have uh, spent time um, just in those conversations, always in the moment, um, speaking in to young people, to the team or just whoever's there and uh, you are just so generous, so hospitable um, and you love people so so well so thank you so much for that and I want to say that we are so excited um, for how God is going to use you guys in the Isle of Wight um, because I believe there is so much more um, to come. On behalf of the trustees we want to say a huge thank you to Ben for all you've done for Sawyer's Church over the eight years that you've been here. The way you have grown and developed the youth ministry through the surge on a Sunday, though the 40 young people coming together to worship and to experience a different version of church, to the mentoring of young people and youth life groups that you have faithfully run, we thank you for the dedication to the young people at church and the care and love that you have shown to them. Thank you for your hospitality, for your door always being open, literally, and the way you as a family welcome everyone in with open arms and delicious food on the table. Your heart has always been for the local community and to see more people come to know Jesus. Thank you for challenging us out of our comfort zone and reminding us we need to be striving to further God's kingdom in everything that we do. We will miss your passionate preaching and your in-depth Bible knowledge and your wisdom as well. Emma, we are so thankful for all that you are and have brought to Sawyer's. The youth ministry wouldn't be what it is without your input, your love, care and compassion for young people. We are so grateful for your pastoral care and how you come alongside people to check to see how they're doing. Jeff and I were so thankful for the meal train that you organised when our son Theo was born and we know that many other families would say the same thing. This year you have both stepped into new roles and helped ensure church could continue even when we couldn't meet together physically. Ben, thank you for the hours and hours of filming, editing and planning that goes into creating Church Online every single week. We appreciate and acknowledge all that you have done to help us as a church family feel connected to each other. We love that your whole family could get involved in Kids Church. It was great seeing the boys each week. And Emma, you have such a warmth and natural way about you. It was wonderful to hear your message for both the kids and the adults. We are so excited for you both and the boys as you step out in faith and plant a church on the Isle of Wight. We look forward to hearing all the amazing things that God is going to do through you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for those tributes from various people across the, uh, the church um, family uh, for Ben and Emma. I just want to say a few words now and uh, um, a, a big thank you um, from me. Um, to Ben, Emma, Malachi, Judah and, uh, and, and Asher. Um, you know, ben and Emma have been with us for eight years, um, leading our youth work here at Soyuz Church. Ben um, trained at the Amnos Church Planting School and at the end of that course um, came and, and joined us as our, our youth pastor and uh, married Emma, met Emma um, and uh, um, have done a, they've done a great job just uh, leading our young people and uh, they've led as a couple um, which has been fantastic. Emma working and um, leading alongside um, Ben and uh, just uh, encouraging our, our young people. And, and some of my memories, just uh, um, uh, as I think about it, first of all is that, you know, when we had a baptismal service here at Soyuz Church, we've always had young people getting baptised. And uh, that's fantastic because Ben and Emma have a passion for evangelism. And uh, we're going to see that as they plant a church on the Isle of Wight. But they've got this passion for reaching um, people. And so many of our young people have become Christians under their ministry and then got on to get baptised and now growing um, in God, which is fantastic. Actually, just recently, two of our former young people, Fife and F um, Finn and Fife, um, have just launched a life group for our 20s. Um, and uh, they have grown up under um, Ben and Emma's ministry. Um, and uh, so, so this passion for evangelism has been born out in their lives. And, uh, you know, 
Um, Emma has been fantastic with our children's work, leading Holiday Bible Club and working alongside our children's pastors um, in regards to Holiday Bible Club. Remember her leading worship at Holiday Bible Club and the children worshipping God. Um, and then Emma's also done a great job just uh, during um, this time of lockdown, um, leading our kids' church right at the very beginning of lockdown and also mentoring our young people some of our, our young girls um, and done a brilliant job so a, a really big thank you to Ben and Emma for all that you've done here um, at Soyuz Church and um, another thing I just need to say is that you know many people have commented on the smooth transition that we've had from um, Church of Beckett Keys to Church Online and uh, yeah, one of the key people um, in that, I mean, it's been a team effort, but one of the key people that's really helped us with that has been Ben, because he's in the background been doing all of the editing and uh, we send him the clips that we uh, that we want and, and, and Ben pulls it all together and produces Church Online um, on, a, uh, on a Sunday. So a big, big thank you to Ben for that um, as well. So, you know, Ben and Emma, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the way in which you have led our youth work. And uh, we want to just say that we really are praying for you as a church family as you start this new season um, in your ministry um, on the Isle of Wight leading Altitude Church. So I just want to pray now and uh, that will be um, great. Heavenly Father, we just lift up Ben and Emma. We lift up Malachi and Judah and Ash, Asher to you um, today. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for the seed that they've planted here. Lord, we thank you for the fruit that we've seen from that seed. And Lord, we thank you for all the lives that they have touched, all the lives that they have made a difference in. We've heard um, the, today some of uh, those stories of how people have been blessed and uh, there's so many more people as well. And so Lord, we just thank you for that. And as they take this next step, in their ministry as they move to the Isle of Wight in the coming weeks as they um, pioneer um, Altitude Church. Lord we pray that you will go with them. Lord you will bless them and guide them and lead them. Lord that I pray you will just um, Lord provide for them. Lord not just financial provision but provide for them in every way. May people come alongside them and encourage them and help them on the Isle of Wight. Lord, we thank you for already the doors that you have opened. And Lord, we pray you will continue to open doors for their ministry and bless them as a family in the name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. Now, at the end of uh, this service, we have a Zoom meeting and uh, the Zoom details are on the screen now. And we want to invite the whole church family to come and join us on Zoom. Um, I know many of our young people are with us this morning and parents of our young people and visitors. Come and join us on Zoom because on that we can say a more personal thank you to um, Ben and Emma uh, for their ministry um, with us. It's hard to do that uh, on church online, but in the Zoom meeting we can be a lot more personal. And we're going to be presenting Ben and Emma and the family with a gift. And I'm going to give you a clue now as to what that gift is going to be. Um, so many of you, as I've spoken to you, um, you know, have talked about Ben's preaching. And many of you remember a preach that he, um, um, he delivered here at Sawyer's where he talked about meeting Jesus around the campfire. Talked about how important it is to spend time with God, to spend time with Jesus and encouraged us to, to, to meet with Christ um, around the campfire. So there's a little bit of a clue um, as to the gift that we're going to be giving Ben and Emma a little bit later on. But please come and join us and that will be absolutely fantastic. OK, well, lastly, um, I just want to really, really, um, uh, um, I'm, I'm really excited about Christmas um, and, uh, you know, uh, next Sunday we move into December and Christmas is just a few weeks away and uh, we have a fantastic Christmas program um, at Church Online and, uh, and maybe at the Gavron as well at Beckett Keys. We're still looking at that as to whether we can, can meet back there in December. But we're now going to show you um, um, a, a media piece that is going to introduce our Christmas program as we move into December. So please watch this and be excited about all that's going to be going on over December leading into Christmas. And then after that media piece, we're then going to go into our offering. And uh, again, there'll be a media piece that leads us through that. And then Ben Carmen is going to preach to us um, to conclude our service today. So God bless you and I'll see you later in the Zoom lounge. Thank you.
Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great week at church today. Uh, it's my last week here. Being able to preach to you guys is a real privilege and honour as it always has been, whether it's been in the youth or the adult services. Being here and being able to share the word of God is one of my most favourite things to do, knowing it makes a difference in people's lives. As I've been praying today, I really feel God has laid in my heart a word for you today that hopefully will challenge you, hopefully be a reminder for the future. And it's something I really want to leave for every young person watching today, every child watching today, every adult, grandparent, every single person, every married person. I think that this is one of the most fundamental messages that I could bring to you today to leave behind as my kind of last word for you today. Me and my family, we absolutely love fireworks night. Guys, maybe you at home love fireworks night. Maybe you love the rockets. Maybe you love the Catherine wheels. Maybe you love like, the massive boxes that you just light, run away, and for five minutes, fireworks are exploding everywhere. I have always loved not only watching fireworks, but also lighting fireworks. Uh, if you've known me for any period of time and you are uh, been to my house at fireworks night, you'll know that me and Emma love putting on a great big fireworks party. We love eating hot dogs, we love cooking uh, jacket potatoes, we love launching rockets and doing sparklers. We love gathering people for fireworks each night just because we love spending time with people and I love lighting fireworks. Uh, over the years we've had some great parties and some great times. Uh, and I think what's awesome about fireworks night is me and Emma, as long as we've been dating and have been married, we've always celebrated fireworks night. We used to, in the really early days when we were uh, in our stage of dating each other, we would uh, go and buy a kebab, we would then pull up on a hillside somewhere, romantically watching the fireworks explode around us. And this was just awesome time to think, wow, some of these fireworks kind of took up the whole sky, lit up the whole sky around us. In the church I grew up in, every year we would have a huge fireworks party. And there'd be all kind of games inside the church, like apple bobbing, they'd be grabbing a donut off of a string, there'd be hot dogs to eat. But also, at one point in the evening, everyone would gather outside in the car park, and in the field opposite, a huge firework display would go off, and everyone would be like, ooh! Wow! And it would just be an awesome time of seeing bright fireworks, screaming rockets, huge displays. But also, every year there was another part of fireworks night that happened. There was a bonfire. And we would bring along pallets and woods and rubbish and pile it up and it would be lit and everyone would gather around the fire. And uh, it was just an amazing time because then when I went to Ireland to visit one of my friends, they had huge bonfires, the sizes of houses, and the heat was radiating off and was so hot that even in November you'd want to take your coat off because it was just so warm. Everyone's faces would be glowing in orange. And what I remember about it was that the fireworks would come and go, they'd be loud and powerful, but actually what mattered was the fire. In that church um, fireworks display every year, people gathered around the fire. People drank tea around the fire long after the fireworks had gone. People's conversation didn't happen during the fireworks because they were too noisy and too bright and everyone was too consumed by them. But actually, people talked around the fire. And as long as that fire was kept stoked and going, people would stay there. Long after the fireworks had died out, the tea had gone cold, the fire was still going. And I remember coming to church the next day on a Sunday and having people say, don't go near the fire, actually it's still hot. 24 hours afterwards, that fire would still be warm and the embers would still be glowing. And I feel like God's challenged me to ask you guys today and to ask myself, don't become a firework, but be a fire for Jesus. In our relationship with God, God's not asking us to be Sunday morning Christians like a little rocket where we come along and light ourselves and shoot off in the air, make a big explosion but disappear. Who knows that at fireworks night you spend more time picking up the rubbish from the fireworks you lit than you do enjoying the fireworks. You go around collecting, collecting all the dead rockets and the dead um, packets that have blown up. You collect them all in and have to chuck them all away. Who knows that when you light a firework it's come, it's gone and it's done. Whereas a bonfire, whereas a fire can keep going. Fire needs three things to be sustained. It needs oxygen. It needs fuel and it needs ignition or heat. I want to say to you today, guys, that actually a fire can be kept burning. That You can keep stoking a fire. You can keep adding logs. As long as oxygen is always provided, you can keep a fire going. Fire brings so much more than a rocket. A rocket is beautiful. A rocket looks nice, but it's a flash in a pan. Gone forever once it's been gone off. But a fire will keep 
on burning. A fire has purpose. A fire provides heat, it provides light. It provides somewhere for us to cook and for us to eat from. It provides somewhere where we can gather around. You can't gather around a rocket, it will just blow up and hurt you. But you can gather around a fire. I want to say today that you as Christians, me as a Christian, God's calling me not to be a firework where it's a big show for 10 seconds. But God's calling to me a life of building and sustaining a fire. God's calling me into a relationship where he wants me to be a fire for other people's benefits. That when you light a fire, people gather. That when you have a fire burning, people naturally surround it. I want to say to you today, guys, that in your life, would you start to look at yourself and think about how you can provide the areas in your life that you need to sustain the fire that is your relationship with Jesus? I think there are three key areas. And if you've been in our youth ministry long enough, I hopefully you know it's off by heart. But the first one is the fuel of our faith is the word of God. The word of God is the Bible that we should be reading and consuming. And just like a fire, it's not just good enough to read it once and put it to the side. Because who knows that if you just lit a fire and left one log on there burning, soon it would be gone. But no, the word of God needs to continually be added to our life. It needs to be continually put on the fire. But not only does it need to be put on, if you're trying to sustain a fire and keep it going, you also need to shake off the old ashes. You need to live for a word for today. We need to have the rhema word of God in our life. The word is specifically for now. We need to have the word of God from scripture that is burning inside of us all the time and adding fuel for our life. I want to say today that you need to be in the word of God every single day. I know it can be hard. I'm a dad of three kids. I've got a wife. I've got work. And I'm finding ways to add the word of God, add that fuel into my life daily. I listen to an app called Dwell, which is so I'm reading the word of God to me. And I've currently just finished Acts and I'm about to start listening to Timothy and Titus on it. And it's just a great way to listen to the word of God. So guys, maybe find different ways that you can add that fuel of the word of God into your life. Next is oxygen, and I want to say oxygen to the fire is like prayer to our life. Prayer really is a conversation with God, a continuous, ongoing conversation. Just like oxygen to a fire, you can't just throw bursts at it. Oxygen is always being poured in and keeping that fire alight. So when you add the word of God and you add prayer in there, you're adding oxygen to it to keep it going. I want to say to you guys, build a constant conversation with your creator. No matter where you are, no matter what's going on, it's not about a religious ceremony. It's about realising that the God who is in you wants to talk to you. He wants to lead you and guide you. He wants to speak into your situation. He wants to use that fuel you've put in there, those logs, those Bible verses, those scriptures. And he wants to use those to talk to you. Maybe this week as you're going into your local shop to buy something, maybe you can say to God, God... Do you want me to buy something for someone else? Maybe he wants to buy you flowers for someone. Maybe he wants you to buy a cake for someone. Maybe he wants you to pay for the shopping for the person behind you. Who knows what he'll ask you. But if we're not asking him what he wants us to do, if we're not in a prayer conversation with God, the creator can't talk to us. So just start that process. Just saying, God, God, here's my day. I'm getting in my car. Is there something you want me to do? Is there someone you want me to see? Is there someone you want me to text? Prayer takes the fuel and keeps it ignited. That oxygen keeps the fire going. And the ignition to our fire, the heat that is added to keep it burning. So we've got the word of God, we've got prayer, and I feel like the ignition is worship. Who knows that in every situation in our life, worship should always be on our lips, but it can be so hard. When we read about Paul in his hardest and most dire situations, in prison, arrested for leading a church, arrested for speaking over leaders, arrested for saying that Jesus died and rose again, when he was arrested and in a prison, uh, strapped and chained to soldiers, what he turned to was worship. Worship is where our breakthrough is found because it's where we remember that God is bigger than the situation we find ourselves in. That when Paul found himself in those moments, when the disciples found themselves in those moments, they had the word of God in them. They were praying to God, but the outworking in those moments was to worship God. To remember God was bigger than the chains, bigger than the Romans, bigger than the empire that was oppressing them. He was bigger than the universe that they lived inside of. He was bigger than everything. And in that they could worship him. And when we worship God, we remember that he loves us and that we love him. We remember that he died for us on a cross. As we start to worship and lift God up, our situation that seems so big starts to become so small. 
And some of us are facing really big things right now. Some of us are facing sickness, financial worries. Some of us are facing big things that we've never had to face before. And what we need to do is recognise those and in a conversation, in prayer, hand them to God. We need to receive that fuel again, that word of God for that moment to remember that our God is good and just and faithful, that our God is going to be with you in all things, he's going to leave you or forsake you, that our God has come to give us life and life to the full and that fuel starts to add and build our fire back up. And then as we worship, the ignition starts to burn brighter and brighter, the heat starts to build up because we start to remember that those problems that the word of God and the prayer has started to affect when we worship God despite nothing has changed because he's still good, he's still worthy of all prayer. We were created to worship God. And the reason we build fires out of our lives isn't just for us. It's amazing that God wants a relationship with you and me, but our fires should inspire other people to light fires. I want you to think about the fact that when we light a fire, people gather. When your life is a fire for Jesus, people will gather. People will gather around you for the heat and the light and the source that you provide for them. Maybe it's in your home, maybe it's your friends and your family. Maybe it's whenever you go to that shop, the person is talking to you from behind the counter. I want to say that when we are a fire for Jesus, when we are a light on a hilltop, when we let that light shine, people naturally gather around it. And the great thing about fire is this, is that we get the privilege of being able to help other people have their fire ignited. That we get to pass on the things that we have learned. We get to teach and show people how to keep their fire alight once it's been lit. The reason fires are amazing is that when people gather, they go away and they will start fires themselves. They'll go away and do the same as you to read the word of God, to pray and to worship God above all things. I want to say to us today that the reason God has set us on fire is because he loves you so, so much. Because he wants you to be part of his kingdom. God's not looking for firework Christians. He's looking for fire blazing Christians. People who light and sustain their fire, sustain their relationship with God. We read in Revelation about a church who has forgotten their first love and is calling them back to that first love. I want to say to you guys today that all of us are always being called back to that first love because when we have love, the rest of the stuff falls in place. When we love God above all things, we're going to read his word, we're going to want to talk to him and we're going to want to worship him. But then when we do those things, God's going to remind us that he not only loves us, he loves the people around us and he's calling us to love on them too. That we are called to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. And just like we light a fire for ourselves, we should also be trying to help bring people into that relationship with Jesus. Those two things are so key and I want to leave that with us that you guys, all of us, if we can put those things in place. And it's not about getting up at six o'clock and reading for half an hour, praying for ten minutes, worshipping for ten minutes, calling it a day. That's not the point. The point is that actually throughout our day, may those things be weaved into our life. My relationship with Emma isn't based on 10 minutes in the morning and I come home at night and go to bed and every day sustain my lifelong relationship with an hour a day. No, it's about text messages during the day. It's about when something goes wrong, the person I ring is my wife. It's about realising when something amazing happens, the person I ring first is my wife. When something we're struggling with comes up, the person I work through that with is my wife. It'd be weird if every day I just gave her an hour update about what's going on in my life and didn't talk to her for the rest of the day. And that's why we should look at our lives with Jesus like a fire that needs to be sustained by adding the word of God, by adding prayer, by adding worship. And all that leads to us naturally sharing and gathering and changing the people's lives around us. Just this week, uh, I was helping my friend load up a theatre set. And in there was a beautiful, massive, ornate cast iron fire. It was about this high. And he said to me, Ben, can you go grab it for me? And I was like, oh, it looks pretty heavy. I don't know if I would be able to move it by myself. Uh, I'll try it. I'll give it a go. And as I walked over to that fireplace to pick up this cast iron fire, it didn't weigh anything at all. The fire was just a prop, but I was expecting it to at least be made out of wood, but it wasn't. It was made out of vacuum formed plastic, thin, thin plastic. And as I spoke to him about it, he said, oh, this stuff's just absolutely rubbish and we wouldn't really use it, but that's what they wanted to use, that's what they spec for the job, but it's pointless. He said, actors can't lean on it. They can't light a fire in it. You can't touch it or move it or it'll break and crack. And I think God's calling me when I was watching that to think to myself, 
God wants us to actually be what he's called us to be. He doesn't want us to have a, a pretense or a pretend fire. He wants us to be real with who we actually are called to be in every situation, whether we're at church on a Sunday, whether we're at life groups, whether we're sitting with a friend in a coffee shop, whether we're buying something from the shop. Would you be the fire God has created you to be? We serve the God of the impossible and he wants to use you to change the world around him. He wants you to carry the fire of God that he's created in you everywhere you go. He doesn't want it saved for like a little rocket that we light on a Sunday morning. He wants a continuous, ongoing fire that is built upon every single day. Like that fake fireplace, it's going to sit there and look pretty for a little while. But you know what happens to it when the show ends? It just gets chucked away because it's pointless, it's useless, it only serves to look nice. Whereas a real fireplace is a place where people gather a place where a fire can be maintained and sustained, a place where people can surround it and be with it and enjoy its heat. Would you be those sorts of people? Would I be that sort of person? My prayer for us as a church, as me and Emma moved to the Isle of Wight, is this, that we'd be a church that was known for our love, that knew the word of God, that prayed and that worshipped Jesus, and that people would start to gather around us as we light that fire, like a light on a hilltop. People would start to gather and surround it. I love you guys and I really hope that this is going to help you. Maybe it's just a reminder for this week. Maybe like me, you've been struggling in the last month and actually this is just a reminder for myself that I need to get back into the word of God more. I need to start to pray more and worship more. Because actually what I want is a long-term sustained relationship with Jesus, remembering all the time my first love so that I might have life and life to the full and that's found in a relationship with Jesus. I'm just going to pray for us right now. Holy Spirit, I just pray for everyone at home that they might know your love and your mercy and your grace. I pray that we wouldn't be firework Christians, but instead we'd be people stoking a continuous, ongoing fire for you in our lives. Lord, that we'd be adding that word of God to our life every day. Lord, that we'd be adding prayer to our life every day. That we'd be adding worship to our life every day. And as that fire of our relationship with you starts to burn, people would gather like they always do around fire. And as they gather, may they catch something from us. May they catch that they can have that same relationship with you. They can have that same personal, intimate relationship with you. Holy Spirit, I pray for everyone at home that they would start to look at their day. How they can spend more time with you. So that you can burn something in them that would change the world around them. I pray that me and them, as we move to the Isle of Wight, we'd hear amazing stories of individuals in the church who've kept their fire stoked and burning hot and have gathered people and seen the lost saved, that we'd see alphas packed full of people who are hearing and having their lives transformed by you. Holy Spirit, here we are. Would you speak to us? Lord, during worship, may we start to lift you up above our problems. May we remember that you are bigger than our situation. Holy Spirit, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we worship you and say, come, have your way in us. In Jesus' name, Amen.
We just want to take this chance to say a huge thank you to Sawyer's Church. We've been coming here, well I've been here eight years once when me and Emma got married. I started coming here. I've been the youth pastor here for eight years. We've just had so much fun being here. We've had so many amazing moments with young people. I think we've seen over 20 young people baptised since we've been here. And we're just so thankful, not only for the youth work, but the families we've managed to connect with over all this time. And we just wanted to thank you for everyone who's done tributes this morning, although we haven't seen them. Uh, we'll be seeing them live like you guys. We just wanted to thank you for everyone who's spoken and said thank you to us. Um, and we want to honour you as a church. And we believe the best is always yet to come with God. So even though we're moving on, the best is still yet to come. And we want to thank the staff team I've managed to work with uh, throughout the years being here. And just say a huge thank you for everything you've done for us, but also for the future of our relationship with you as we go to plant a church on the Isle of Wight. Yeah, guys, I've been here for 11 years, I think, just over 11 years. Um, so there's too many memories and there's too many people um, to say goodbye to, especially on here. Um, so much of our time here has been focused on building family and building relationships and friendships. So it feels like a, another small cruelty of 2020 that... Uh, I'm saying goodbye to Ben's phone <laughs> uh, <laughs> rather than my friends. Um, um, but I'm I'm so grateful for all of you. For our youth team, you are extraordinary. Um, I have watched you go from um, one person to a, a very significantly sized team. Um, so many of you basically scrapped the rota and showed up every single week. Um, because you were so passionate about serving our young people. I've seen you pray for young people as they've become Christians, cheer for them as they've been baptised, cry with them as they've been sad about the things they're going on in their life. Um, I've seen you drive in the middle of night to hospital in the middle of Wales to be with young people who have turned poorly while we've been away. Uh, there's thousands of things that I've seen you do, but one of the most precious memories that I have is um, sharing dinner with you round our table a thousand times and playing fun games and doing life together and um, that for me is church being together with God's family wherever we are so wherever you are this morning we are together and we are still church and we are still church regardless of where we are and um, I'm so grateful for that for our young people um, we really do love you so much and um, it has been a, a, an honour, total honour. Um, the 11 year olds that I served with 11 years ago are now 22 year olds. The 15 year olds that I served with are now 26 year olds and some of my closest friends and um, you know there is nothing greater than seeing a child become a teenager who falls in love with Jesus and chooses to follow him for the rest of their life. Um, and although I have a thousand memories and a thousand thank yous, I just want to thank God most of all that we have got to be part of your life. Yep. We love you. We are rooting for you. Um, and he has the best plans for you. And we can't wait for you to discover what they are and tell us all about it. So guys, make sure you're joining us on Zoom after today. We'd love to see everyone to come along to that. And uh, like I said, we can't put into words on camera how much you mean to us, every single one of you, from the youngest person we've worked to the oldest. It has just been an honour and a privilege to serve you guys. And our team, like Emma said, have meant so much to us because they're not our team, they are our family. And for everyone who knows us well, you know our door does not lock and the door is open. The same will be the same on the Isle of Wight. If you want not to come over, house. not this house, don't turn up here, we will not be here. Um, but the Isle of Wight is our home, that means it's your home as well. So please do come and visit us, email us, text us, WhatsApp us, video call us, whatever you want to do. Come along to the Zoom after the we'd love to see you in person and just to share some more, some great memories because there are thousands to be shared uh, and have a great time with you. So guys, we love you. This isn't goodbye, this is see you later. So guys, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye. Show you.